Hello guys, so today we shall be discussing regarding the anatomy of the upper limb, okay? In the anatomy of upper limb, we shall start discussing with the clavicle, okay? So, this discussion, whatever I am doing, whatever I am teaching you, this will cover all the MCQs from all the workbooks, okay? So, whatever MCQ you do from this topic which I am telling you, all of them will be covered and this is more than enough for your FMG or the coming next exam, okay? So, let us discuss about the clavicle. Now, whenever you look at the clavicle, right? So, what is the first thing that comes into your mind? So, the first thing is that clavicle is a S-shaped bone, isn't it? Clavicle is a S-shaped bone. So, this is an S-shaped bone. And if you look at the peculiarities, guys, what are the different peculiarities which you can find is that so, the first peculiarity, the first peculiarity which you can see is that this is the only bone which lies horizontally. I mean, if for example, this bone is in this way like this, right? So, this is the only bone which lies horizontally. So, what are the first peculiarity? The first peculiarity is that this is the only bone that lies horizontally. Okay? And third important peculiarity is that this is the only bone which is subcutaneous throughout. Okay, along its entire length it is subcutaneous which means it is just beneath the skin, right? If you can touch it all the way from one point from the sternal end till the acromial end. If you keep on touching you can feel the bone because it is subcutaneous throughout, right? Because it is subcutaneous. throughout fourth important question and it has been recently asked many times guys this question has been asked repeated many number of times that this is the first bone in the body to undergo ossification right so if someone asks you what is the first bone to ossify in your body right the first bone to ossify in your body that is your clavicle and you know when does the ossification take place the ossification takes place at fifth to sixth week of intrauterine life. Be, uh, at fifth to sixth week of intrauterine life, this is the first bone that undergoes ossification. Okay. Next important thing. Next important peculiarity is that if you look at the clavicle, it has got two ossification centers. Now, what do I mean by ossification centers? Ossification centers, in the sense, that is the place from where the bone growth starts or the ossification starts. For example, if you take this clavicle. Right, so there are two ossification centers. One center is here that is called as a primary center, and next one we have got a secondary center. How many primary centers are there? In the center, you have got a primary ossification center. Okay, now from the center, the bone develops peripherally like this. So, ossification center in the sense that is a place from where the bone growth starts. Okay, now one primary center is located here and Two secondary centers. One secondary center is located at this end, another secondary center is located at this end. So, so guys, if you look at the ossification centers, if you look at the ossification centers, right, so one ossification center is located in the center, and this is called as primary ossification center. Next, we have got two ossification centers on either side. Right, two ossification centers on either side. So these are called as secondary ossification centers. So one primary ossification centers, two secondary ossification centers. Okay. And next important thing is that if you can look at the clavicle here, there are two ends, right? So this end is called as a medial end, this end is called as a lateral end. Okay. This end joins with your sternum. This end joins with your acromion process of your scapula. You know, within your scapula, you have got acromion process, right? On the back of the scapula, you have got spine, which continues as acromion process. All of you know that. So, with that acromion process, this acromion end of the clavicle will attach there. And uh, this one attaches to the sternum. So, medial end is something quadrangular, right? And it is rough, very rough. And it is quadrangular. If you look at the lateral end, it is flat from above downwards, isn't it? It is flat end from above downwards, okay? So, where will the medial end, guys? 
see this is called as the medial end this is called as the lateral end okay now what is the other name for the medial end as it is fusing with the sternum you can also call medial end as sternal end in the same way you can call this lateral end as acromion end acromion end okay next important next important point is that this question has also been asked previously that this is the bone which has got no medullary cavity in the center of the bone there is no medullary cavity this is the bone which has got no medullary cavity this is the bone which has got no medullary cavity next important thing next important thing is that where is the most common fracture site for this clavicle right so what is the most common most common site of clavicular fracture of clavicular fracture what is the most common site of clavicular fracture guys so previously we have been learning that the medial two third and the lateral one third i mean the junction between the medial two third and the lateral one third is, that is the place where the clavicle fracture happens right so this is the medial two third and this is the lateral one third so exactly at this point the clavicle fracture happens this is what we studied previously right but now in the recent grace anatomy edition the 42nd edition it has been updated that medial three fifth and lateral two fifth medial three fifth and lateral two fifth where my thumb fingers are there exactly at this point at this point there is a clavicular fracture okay so this is a updated curriculum what it is updated is that the junction of medial three fifth and lateral two fifth medial three fifth and lateral two fifth and this is very very important guys for you to remember and definitely you have to remember this because this is very 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 important because it has been updated so there are chances that they cannot ask you this thing okay next important thing is that there are two joints guys now what are these two joints as you can see here this is your clavicle right so clavicle is fusing with your sternum isn't it see clavicle is joining with your sternum here forming a joint this is called sternoclavicular joint on the other end the lateral end clavicle attaches with the acromion process this is called as acromioclavicular joint so there are two joints there are two joints so this joint is called as sterno clavicular joint right on the other hand you have joint this is called as acromio clavicular joint okay so one is your sternoclavicular joint another one is called as your acromio clavicular joint okay right so previously in the exams it has been asked that what type of joint is sternoclavicular joint okay so sternoclavicular joint is a type of saddle joint this is an important mcq to remember sternoclavicular joint is a type of saddle joint in the same way it has also been asked that what type of joint is acromioclavicular joint acromioclavicular joint is a plain synovial joint so this was asked previously okay so this is a plain synovial joint plain synovial joint okay plain synovial joint next important thing is that next important thing is that let me draw it so let us say this is your sternum right this is your sternum and after that you have got your clavicle all the way this is your clavicle and here you have got your first rib like this right so this is your first rib on either side let us draw the first rib like this this is the first rib now very important thing is that there is a ligament that is attaching the first rib with the clavicle so clavicle and the first rib this ligament is called as costoclavicular ligament costa means ribs clavicle and the ligament between both of them is called as costoclavicular ligament so this ligament over here this is called as costo 
clavicular ligament now why why am i telling you this because previously a question has been asked that which is the strongest ligament of your body the strongest ligament of your body is costoclavicular ligament and second question which was been asked is that the entire weight of the upper limb is transmitted to the axial skeleton you know this is called as the axial skeleton so entire weight of the upper limb is transmitted to the axial skeleton with the help of which ligament that is your costoclavicular ligament so costoclavicular ligament is one of the strongest ligament in your body one of the strongest ligament in the upper limb okay so next important thing is that costoclavicular ligament is the one which transmits weight of upper limb to axial skeleton to axial skeleton so this is the important thing which you need to keep in mind okay next important question that has been asked from this uh, topic is that just below the clavicle we have got a infra clavicular fossa right so let us say this is the clavicle just below the clavicle we have got a fossa here this is called as infra clavicular fossa now when i palpate into the infra clavicular fossa i can actually palpate a bone i can feel a bone that is nothing but called as a coracoid process of the scapula okay so in the infra infra clavicular fossa whatever you can feel that is called as the coracoid process of the scapula coracoid process of the scapula okay now let us enter into the clinical part now let us enter into the clinical part guys so in this clinical part over here you can see you can see this kid is touching his two shoulders right now how is this kid able to touch his two shoulders guys what is happening in this so first of all you have to know that this particular condition whatever i have represented here this is a autosomal dominant condition autosomal dominant inheritance okay it is an autosomal dominant inheritance so in this what will happen is that i told you that there are ossification centers within the clavicle right so there is a primary ossification center here and here on either side we have got secondary ossification centers so if there is any defect in development of these ossification centers any kind of defect in these ossification centers then what will happen is that further bone growth will not happen so in some patients little bit of clavicle might be developed and the further development will be stopped but in most of the patients absolutely clavicle is not at all present okay so this is called as partial or complete absence of clavicle partial or complete absence of clavicle and this is called as hypoplastic clavicle this is called as hypoplastic clavicle okay and this condition whatever i have just explained you this is called as cleidocranial dysostosis this is called as cleidocranial dysostosis okay so this is a important thing which you need to keep in your mind right so this is all the discussion about uh, the clavicle guys so if you look clavicle is an s shaped bone this is the only bone which lies horizontally subcutaneous throughout and this is a very important mcq that this is the first bone in the body to undergo ossification right and this was also a question that is asked that it has got no medullary cavity and this was asked previously that uh, the medial three fifth and the lateral two fifth is the axial site of the fracture. Okay, so two joints: acromioclavicular, sternoclavicular. Sternoclavicular is saddle. Acromioclavicular is plain synovial joint. Okay. Next, costoclavicular ligament. This is the strongest ligament of the upper limb. It transmits the weight of the upper limb onto the axial skeleton. Cleidocranial dysostosis, autosomal dominant, uh, hypoplastic clavicles. And you know, all of you have to know that this is the clavicle, right? what are clavicles doing clavicles are opening up the chest cavity right so it is putting all it is putting both the shoulders wide apart 
now when there are no clavicles what will happen is that this muscle the chest muscle whatever is there this is called as a pectoralis major muscle so that this pectoralis major will pull the left one the pectoralis major on the right side will pull the right humerus so both the humerus bones they come towards each other and touch each other so that is the reason why the patient can is able to touch both of his shoulders okay so this is the end of the topic guys thank you